Hello and welcome to our channel. My name is Balram Prasad and I am working with Microsoft as a senior software engineer. And today we are going to talk about different type of identity for managing Azure services. For agenda, we will talk about UPN, service account, SPN, which is service principle and managed identity, why it is important, how things were being handled when we were using service account, what is the current state right now in most of the cases we generally use service principle and MI, what is the future state should we go ahead and move to MI, and what is the pro and cons. So why it is important? So in this context, let's first talk about one of the data breach happened in 2017 and how the hackers were able to attack the systems. This is the CSO portal where we can go and read these details about and how this company was attacked. So company was initially attacked by a consumer complaint web portal and generally in web portal we call service to service connection to API and then API calls database and other resources right using service principle or using managed identity or different type of identity we use. So attacker were able to move from web portal to other server because system were not properly segmented from one another uh, and they were able to find user and password stored in plain text right uh, generally so a lot of different people who do not know how to secure that user and password they can they keep into config files they can keep into databases and other things that's how they were able to pull that one and they were able to log into database servers other servers and then they were able to read a lot of data from that servers. And that's how if you go and see that lot of breaches has happened because of poor management of identity and keeping the secrets and other things inside code or inside configs. And that is what we have to avoid that. And we have to learn about how to apply a proper identity for our services so that our services will be secure. So let's talk about UPN. What is UPN? UPN is user principal name. It is the name of a system user in generally in email address format like john at the red domain.com whatever domain is there for company or or you are providing any external identity in another thing that is their UPN right. Generally it is login name and separator with symbols right at the rate and domain name. So our email is generally an example of UPN and that typically used for user to service context. It is not generally used for service to service communication. Generally, when we go to any web pages, we use this UPN, right? We provide our email address and password and we log into that site. That is user to service communication. So now let's talk about service accounts. A service account is a user account that has been created to run a particular piece of software or services. And this was kind of non-interactive account. So using this account, you cannot log in into machine in interactive way, but you can run any application code using that. And if you have worked in past, generally uh, this kind of service account were being used when we were running that code under any Windows service, or we were running some SQL agents on using this uh, service account so that it can communicate to network resources or if we were developing any mail related application where background application was sending emails then we were using mailbox type of system account and that's how this accounts was there there were different type of accounts in this one group managed service account also where system was able to manage the password instead of us in rest of service account also we had to manage password and that was similar to UPN. So, so if you go into more details, then we can see that these are that few things we can do with the service account. And then uh, there was a group managed service account concept also that now a days uh, after moving to Azure AAD, we generally do not use this kind of account right now. So now let's talk about service principle. So an Azure service principle is an identity created for using with application, hosted services or automated tool to access Azure resources. Right, so we create this service principle inside Azure AAD so that if 
we have a web app and we have an api app we call we go to portal and visit our web app using upns right but and service to service communication where api might be accessing and updating cosmos db sql db or a key vault or any other resources that can typically happens with service principle or managed identity and that's where you have to have if you are dealing with service principle you have to maintain your secret or certificate that is also a problematic because then you have to rotate in other things that we will see so once we create a service principle we generally assign that access to this kind of resources and that's how we do that and we had a video we had created a service principle if you wanted to see that how to create a service principle you can go and look that video so let's talk about managed identity managed identity also is an identity or it is also a service principle only but an azure provides additional facility on the top of normal service principle which we will see in the next slide what are the different things can be achieved using managed identity so let's go to next one if you see this slide right we create generally service principle we grant permission and then we get credential so when we create the service principle we can create the secret or certificate to authentication purpose and then we using that certificate or secret and uh, and object id or application id of that service principle we generate the access token and we call that one but now you have to maintain this credential either secret or either uh, certificate or and you have to rotate all this right every six month or every one year you have to rotate that one you have to clean up this credential so that it does not look you have to store this credential in proper way in some key vault or somewhere right you cannot do into plain text and other things you have to maintain the access of key vault so there are a lot of overheads comes uh, with this service principle for managing that credentials right now let's see what happens with managed identity managed identity you enable that managed identity for that azure resources you grant the permission and use that identity you do not have to maintain any secret um, for that right azure manages all the identity related secrets behind the scene and when we call the code related to that to get that access token to access the resources Azure will provide that access by knowing that which identity to use, what secret suite, how to generate the token and other things. That's all we have to do. So it, it is much secure than that one because we do not have now credential to manage. Azure itself is managing that credentials, right? We do not have to rotate anything. So that, that is the major difference between service principle and managed identity. Uh, if you do service to service authentication, using SPN then you have to authenticate using client ID and secret or client ID and certificate and then you will get an access token then you can send that access token to any resources be it a key vault or cosmos or SQL then this access token will be validated and then you can access that resources so that's where secret and certificate you have to maintain and rotate now let's see that one that how that happens with managed identity so managed identity from where our code is deployed either it is deployed into app services it is function app or any other vms or anything you just have to enable that identity feature and you can use proper code now when code will be called that resource itself will generate any credential for you that will generate a token for you when you call that endpoint by passing all the injecting all the details into that call and it will generate a token for you and you can communicate with the services like key vault uh, cosmos and whatever not right and then rollover and other things is managed by azure itself so that is why it is much more than secure than service principle let's talk about managed identity type so if we see this diagram we basically understand that azure active directory has upn also and service principle also right in service principle we can go with normal where we app register and generate a secret and certificate based authentication or when we enable any managed identity for any resources it will also go ahead inside the azure directory and create a enterprise in application and that is also a kind of service principle which is managed by azure itself 
and again managed identity will be two type of that one one is system assigned managed identity and another is user assigned managed identity so let's see what are the different differences between two type of managed identity so system managed identity is created when we create the res azure resource itself we can go and enable based on whatever our need on that one user assigned managed identity we can create alone there are some use cases when we can do that one and we should do that one system managed identity can't be shared with other azure resources it is typically bound to that azure resources but user managed identity is independent life cycle right when we delete that resources the user assigned managed identity is not going to delete but if you delete system assigned managed identity resource it will be deleting that identity also system managed identity can't be shared with resources but user managed identity can be shared they generally we use system managed identity with cosmos sql or app services function app because there we do not have to share that one and most of time we don't share that credential with other other resources but there are some resources like uh, we have virtual machine skill set right where lot of vms are there maybe kubernetes cluster where lot of pods are running inside that one then you can create user managed identity and you can assign that one to different places so that's where some of the use cases are there for system assigned managed identity and user assigned managed identity and there are multiple services supports managed identity let's go and see that when what are the different services are supporting that so most of the azure resources are now supporting managed identity and some of the resources like databricks and other things that is also going to come to support this one soon and now let's go into azure portal and see how it kind of looks like right so in previous demo we had created one service principal and looking into service principal we can go to our azure active directory and we can go to app registration generally where we do the registration for a service principal and then we can go to this app service principal we created and in we can see how to create into earlier videos where we had this secret which we, we used to connect with the azure devops there we have to manage that credentials and if we see uh, there is managed application created inside enterprise application so this is where we can see more details and if we go inside property section we can see more details about what are the different things so this is how a application and service principle look like now let's go and try to see that how to see managed identity one so if we go to enterprise application if application type is applica enterprise application we can see all the details that is what we see that right now this was created by me but if we filter out based on managed identity then we can see all the managed identity and if we see this was at, this is attached with a, data factory and if we go and see the property section then we can figure out this is the resource id right this is a, and this is one of the also other great feature which i like mostly that using this one you can trace that which object which resources are using from where but using if we are using normal applications normal service principal then you will be not able to find which resource is associated with the, which service principal generally you need to if you are dealing with lot of service principal then you have to keep somewhere that mapping that hey i am using this service principal in this code and either into pp or prod or development or whatever environment you are using that also you have to maintain so that lot of overheads comes with that one so it is good that if we have a chance you go ahead and start using managed identity now let's see that how to enable managed identity for any resources if you have right now so let's suppose that let's go to our this app services and if you go to identity section you can enable that one system assigned or user assigned so you can turn in off and on if you have off then you can on that one it will go ahead and register into ad and generate a principal id if you wanted to attach any user assigned one then you can go and click that one uh, and whatever you have created you can go ahead and 
attach this one to uh, to this resources so that is what we can do and that is what i wanted to cover in this video i hope you will like that one please share and put the comment uh, if you like that one or if you don't like that one thank you Thank you.